Welcome to a new Cubeucation video. Today I want to show you how a very simple innocent looking mistake can kill an entire production grade Kubernetes cluster. I've given this video the very clickbaity title of the most expensive Kubernetes related mistake you can ever make. Sorry about that, but what I'm about to show you is something that I've seen at real life clients. This incident has now happened for the second time in a different team each time, but nevertheless, I've come to the conclusion that this is sort of one of the, one of the biggest mistakes that you can make related to Kubernetes. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I have a job here. We've talked about jobs before. I've used jobs to water my lawn, to schedule my lawn watering. In real life, you'd probably use them for different one-off tasks. Jobs are also labeled as run to completion tasks in the Kubernetes docs. Um, but it doesn't matter what you use them for. Jobs can fail as anything, anything that runs in the cloud can fail and we expect it to fail sometimes. And usually we wanna deal with those failures in sort of a graceful manner. What I have here though is something that does fail, but not gracefully whatsoever. Take a look at this very simple job resource here. Basically on the pod spec, we start up a container. I'm using an Alpine image here and I've labeled it failing job because this is what it does. So we're opening a shell and we're exiting it with exit code one. So it fails immediately. And now in, in real life, your application might not fail so quickly, but still very quickly. It could fail within the first couple of milliseconds on based on what it's doing. In a real life example that I saw, it was failing for invalid authentication in the first request that it would fire. So this definitely exists. This is not a made up scenario. If you take a look at this line here, it says restart policy on failure. So that kind of makes sense. Let's assume our job makes a network request. One request fails. We don't want to give up on that. We want to restart and that's okay. I mean, this is very similar to how a pod would be restarted if a readiness probe fails, for example. So let's apply this resource and see what happens. I have Minikube running here. I think I'm using version 1.10, but it doesn't really matter so much. This is a, a problem that's common to many versions. So I'll apply this and I will do a kubectl get pods. And what you're seeing here is this one you shouldn't see. This was me not cleaning up before. Actually, that that's scheduled by a job, so probably will will reappear. Doesn't matter. What you're seeing here is this failing new job here has one uh, pod, and that's currently in state error because it failed immediately. So I will do a watch on this. So we can see this pod is still in error. By now it has two restarts after 33 seconds. So this is what I would call graceful failure. It will restart, actually now it's in a crash loop back off. So that means Kubernetes will back off with incrementally higher intervals, exactly to protect us from accidentally killing the cluster. Sorry, I just need to kill this, this other job. It's annoying me and it doesn't have to do anything with what we're doing here. So delete job. Okay. And now if we go back to our job, um, we still have this one pod. It has three restarts by now. So you might say, okay, actually I don't want my job to restart. And then this is where the, where the innocent mistake comes in. What you might do is say, huh, this restart policy, I will put this to never. That seems reasonable enough, but let me show you what happens if I do a kubectl apply on this job again. Actually nothing because it's immutable. Okay, fair enough. So I have to delete this job, failing job. Now it's deleted and now I will create a new job. Okay, so let's go back to watch kubectl get pods. Huh, I have two containers here. Wait, I have three containers or three pods and they're failing. I have four. Wait, do you see a pattern? I see a pattern. This is growing and growing and growing. And this is a very, very easy way to kill an entire cluster because basically you're scheduling about a pod a second. You're flooding your ad CDs, you're flooding all kinds of resources. And this is exactly what can kill a cluster, especially if you leave this in this state on a weekend and go home and want to come back on, on Monday and uh, you see your, your cluster is dead, or hopefully you have some on-call support that takes care of it uh, over the weekend. So why is this? Why is this happening? Why does never lead to us creating more and more pods? I will I will kill this job again. So kubectl delete job, failing job, so I don't kill my machine here. Jobs are gone. Okay, let's take a look again 
at this uh, resource, at this sample job. So we said restart policy never. So why do we get more and more pods? Actually, this is this kind of makes sense. It might not be intuitive, but it actually makes sense. Look at this restart policy. Look at the indentation here. This is on the pod spec. So this means our pod can never fail. However, our job still wants to complete. So this means the lifetime of this individual pod is very, very short. It fails and then it's gone. So the job, which still wants to achieve at least one successful completion of its job, will schedule a new one. This will have a very short lifetime. So we see this pattern over and over again. And this is extremely dangerous. So how is it, how is it different to having on failure here? Actually, in this case, this pod has a very long lifetime because yes, it fails, but between each failure, we have a grace period and we have an incremental back off. So the job as the controller, the job being the controller that controls these pods here that are defined in this pod spec, the job will never have to schedule a new resource because it thinks the resource is still going on. Yes, it's currently failing, but we expect it to eventually succeed. But if we change this to always again, it has a very short lifetime. It has told the job, the controlling resource, I have failed, I will never try again. So the job thinks it has to schedule a new pod. And if they have a very short lifetime, if they exit immediately, then you see exactly what we saw here, just because it's so horrible. Let us do it again. Unsupported value always. By always, of course, I mean never. Always would kind of make sense, but um, never really is the problem here, not always. If we apply it again and do a watch kubectl get pods. We start out with one, there's another one, and another one, and another one. And this will basically go on until your cluster is dead, or in this case, my, my mini cube machine. So please don't ever run into this error. I hope this, this short video helped you. This is really something that I've seen out there in the wild, and I've seen it actually kill production clusters. So be careful when you set your restart policy to never might have a very different meaning, might mean something very different than you intended. In case you're wondering now why failed pods that are piling up can actually kill a cluster or whether they actually can kill a cluster, that's a reasonable thing to ask. I've actually asked myself the same question because I saw this at a real life customers on an on-premise cluster. But as always with on-premise clusters, there might be some specific configuration that's not ideal and this might have actually been a configuration error rather than a Kubernetes thing. So I have actually started, since recording the first part of this video, I have actually started an attempt to kill uh, two different clusters on GKE. And I think I've succeeded now, and I'll show you this in the next video.